Welcome back. And in this lesson, we're going to add a motion path so that we can do something similar to the example I made, like these uh, purple stripes and these spheres that go around the outside that kind of initiate the dynamic simulation and the color change. So let's create that motion path with those spheres now. So I'm going to jump into Maya. I'm going to turn off the mesh network because we don't need it. And I'm going to unhide the original logo, the shift H unhide it. And what I want to do is make a curve based off of these edges so that uh, we can have a path for the spheres to go along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click uh, these, but unfortunately I think because there, it's not a continuous edge loop uh, around a quad, it will not follow. But what you can do is grab the paint selection tool here and Hold down B, middle mouse, drag that. So let's try to make this smaller. <clears throat> it's huge, so I had to get it way down. So now you should be able to kind of click and drag paint your selection here, which might make this go a little faster. So I just want to make sure I'm getting the front outer edge of the logo because that's where the animation is going to happen. Look at that one later. So I'm going to go back to the selection tool, shift, click that one. And then I want to go to modify, convert. And then we want to go to poly edges to curve. Now I just click that and you can already tell it's not really respecting <laughs> what the edges I selected. It's, it's super wonky. So let's undo that and go into the options here poly edges to curve, so click this little box. And what we want is actually uh, linear because we want it to follow exactly one-to-one -one the edges that we have selected. So I'm gonna hit apply or convert uh, now. So now you can see it actually follows exactly what we have. So I'm gonna do that for this other edge and I will see you in one second. So now that we have that, we've already set the settings, we can actually just click that and it should work now. So now we have, we look in the outliner, we have two curves. So let's rename this to the C curve. And I'm going to say MP for motion path. That's just how I like to organize it. And I'll say D for curve motion path. And just to be clear, I'm, I'm calling it C and D because this is the creative uh, uh, digital creator school logo. So we have the D for digital and C for creative right here, but it makes an S uh, for school. So anyway, that's the logo I made up, and so that's why I'm naming it these, this way. So we can see that the curves themselves have their center point down here at the origin. We can change that by going to Modify Center Pivot, and still not great. Oh, sorry, that, yeah, that was for D, so actually that was that's perfect. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to hit G because it, uh, G is the shortcut in Maya to repeat the last command. So with both of those selected, I just wanna scale these out a little bit and I actually turn mash back on because I want these to, um, I want these to go around the outer edge of the pixeled area, the voxelized area, and not the actual logo itself. So we might have to adjust some of this. I think the main one is this bottom one looks, well, let's just wait until we get the, the spheres on there and then we can adjust these curves if we need them to kind of be more centered around uh, a different area. Okay, so let's create a sphere. And what I like to do, let's get a platonic one and let's increase the subdivisions. I mean, it depends on what, because we're if we do a wireframe, you can pick whichever one, whichever kind of object that you want. Um, let me get back into object mode so I can actually select the thing. And let me see if there's not a better. Yeah, if you right click here, let's get the soccer ball. I like the look of that better. So let's do the rename here, C sphere. And I'm just gonna duplicate that Actually, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to scale this down first. Sorry if you hear some noises. I live in 
an apartment complex in Los Angeles. So there's all kinds of sirens and neighbors and road noise going on. So we have that. So now I'm going to duplicate it, call this D. And I'm going to select this, select that, the sphere and the curve. And then if we go to constrain motion paths, attached to motion path. So now it creates the animation for the motion path based on your timeline. So the keyframes are just whatever your timeline is set to. And it looks like, I mean, it depends on how you want to do this, how big you want the spheres. I think the spheres are a little too big still. Let's like both of them and just scale them down a little bit. Because I like the distance, but I don't want them and whether or not you want them touching or you know how you want that to work. So now we have the motion path and we can kind of see we, we need to adjust a few things. I want this to go all the way down to the edge. So I'm just right clicking and going into the uh, vertex mode, uh, right, control vertex. So now I can pull this around, make sure it's kind of in the right spot and go back to object mode. And with the curve selected, we have this output motion path and you can see there's actually keyframes on this thing. So if we go into the graph editor, we can see what those look like. And we don't want this happening. If we look at the reference, we don't want this happening until a little later, until it's all kind of done. So we want it to kind of overlap with this corner happening that we just created. So let's get this started maybe right here. And I want to swap the direction. I want this right now, it has the curve starting, uh, the animation starting down here. I want it to start where it ends currently. So what we can do with the curve selected is go over to the modeling shelf, go to curves and then say reverse direction. So now it's gonna start up here in the top where I want it to. And again, let's go over to motion path. Now we can get that in the graph editor. And I just want to drag this over. So I want this to start around in here. And then we can see how fast we want it to actually play through. That's not bad for now. Let's just do that. So now we know keyframe we want it on. So let's just do the constrain motion path, attach to motion path. And let's see if it's going in the right direction. And let's adjust this. I don't want it to start like inside the thing. I want it to be kind of outside it. So let's get this right. And then let's scrub through and see if it's kind of the right distance away throughout the whole thing, or we can just adjust it like this. I think this makes the most sense for me. Looks pretty good through here. All this needs to get drug out. So I'll just select all of those and then pull it as far as it needs to go. So that's along the outside. I mean, you know what, if we look at the reference, it, it depends on whatever you want to do. This is actually right on the edge of this stuff. I kind of like that more. So let's, let's, let's do that. So not a big deal. Just get this all lined up with the edges. Just like these. So you basically just go based off of what that ed lot, the farthest edge is and you select all the curves. And then you just pull everything down so that it's right on it. So now it should follow, whoops, let me go out. It should follow, I don't know why that isn't working now. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong one. So, So yeah, let's just change this one. Let's get it all lined up. That actually looks kind of right on that edge. Cool. 
So now the spheres are following along on the edge. And I think the difference currently is that these are, if you, ever, if you ever get vertex face, you know you're not on the curve when you're right clicking. Um, Okay. Yeah, if you notice, there's a little glitch there. Whenever I adjust the curve, it looks like it, it kind of breaks the connection on the motion path. Um, but what I was saying was that these are kind of, I don't want them right on the edge. Let's pull them forward a little bit. So what we can do if we want to move all this stuff is just grab the curves and move the curves themselves so that it's um, not so deep set in it in the voxel cubes. So that is how you create a motion path, adjust the motion path, adjust the animation. It looks like we need to just drag this curve down. We want it to go all the way to the edge. And they're they're kind of doing, like when I was doing thinking about this design wise, I want them to um, do the opposite, right? Kind of like a yin yang um, symbol I want them to go along the outside of the edges just as a kind of cool swirly motion, which is again, when you think about the motion that we've done so far, it's a different type of motion, this path and that it's this smooth curve stuff. It's, it's another type of motion that's happening that we haven't seen yet. So I like that. The only thing that I wanna do uh, that's remain to do is, let's get both of these and then select both of their U values here in the graph editor, select them, go to curves, weighted tangents, and I just wanna select the same tangent handle, so the right side of both of them, and then hit W to move and shift middle mouse drag those so that there's a greater ease in and ease out. So it starts really slow. I might even want to start slower. And then we might need more time. So I'm gonna go 250, drag this out because this curve is getting too steep, which tells me it's gonna go really fast. So I might not want it to go that fast. And we can always, of course, change this later. Yeah, it looks fine. I'm gonna make that ease a little bit and drag time out even more. So it starts slow and Let's also figure out based on the time of this finishing, I think I already want these going by now. So I'm gonna select both of them, and just move them sooner in time. Cause I want some of this motion to overlap. So it's not just like one thing happens and then another thing happens. I want it to all kind of flow together. And then the last thing that I wanna do is I wanna scale these on. So let's go to uh, shift H to keyframe the scale because everything else, you see it's all yellow, that means it's connected to the motion path. So the only thing we can actually um, keyframe is scale right now. So Shift H is that. And then I'm gonna go to a few frames before and press, uh, click all the scale, do zero. Now we can kind of see where this animation is. I'm gonna move it around. So those scale on now. Boop, boop. And let's just have it overshoot a little bit. So I'm gonna hit Shift H again. Just a little, put a keyframe a little further. I'm gonna drag this one above. So it overshoots it, right? There's an animation concept. So it kind of blurps and boop, kind of flashes on, goes all the way around. And then I want it to flash off there. So we can just, uh, hit shift R, go uh, three frames forward, alt uh, greater than less than bracket for that keyframe shortcut, which you should be seeing displayed on the screen anyways, but then I'm just gonna go to zero. So they have a little overshoot before they scale down.
Yeah, have it be much more. Can't really see that right now. Boop, yeah. And it's a little slow, so I'm just gonna drag that last frame in, two frames. There we go. Okay, so in this lesson, we figured out the motion path, how to move it, how to manipulate it, how to affect the things on it. Oh, and every time I say that, there's one more thing I wanna talk about. Watch this. When we go around a corner, it's hard to see right now. Let me select a vertex so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Where do those vert vertices go? Look, they're selected and now they're gone. They're over here somewhere. Like the whole thing rotated, which is weird. And, and we'll probably be able to actually see it better in this curve. See how it's rotating? And you can see the vertices that I have are, are moving all over the place. Now they're, now they're, they're at the front. Now they're, so this thing's like spinning around in weird ways um, as it's being animated. So to change that, let's go over here to the motion path tab and turn off follow and do that for both of them. So now let's select an, whatever, an edge, whatever, just so we can kind of keep track of the rotation. It stays total, it stays at the front the whole time, right? It's not rotating around in weird ways. So that's how you fix that. Cool. In the next lesson, we will make the trails for these spheres using MASH again. Thanks for watching.